Hey guys, I'm Phil and this is Woods Tree Farm where we are starting a Christmas tree farm from scratch in Central Virginia. You can maybe see some of our baby trees in the field out there. And we are now in our third year of operation altogether. In our second year growing flowers, we decided to do this just because we have the extra space right now and anything that we can do to build our brand, get our name out there, attract customers, is only gonna help us when we're ready to start selling Christmas trees. And of course, making a little bit of money now while we're waiting for our trees to grow is also something that we're very interested in. So anyway, this year, like I said, is our second year doing flowers, and I wanted to share with you in this video what we've done, what I think has worked well, what didn't work well, and I'm going to go through first the layout of our plot, then I'm going to talk to you about marketing and how we did our events, and lastly, I'm going to talk to you about what didn't work and what we can do better for next year. So to start us off, our plot here is uh, about a third of an acre, maybe a little bit more than a third of an acre. And um, we also had some other sunflower patches that were relatively small outside of this plot. But for the purpose of this conversation, let's just talk about this little third of an acre plot here. And basically what we had was six sections of flowers. Our first is this one here. And then I did a really big aisle way. And then there was another section with an, and then another big aisle way and then another section. So that was three of the six on this side. And that was all zinnias and cosmos. On this side, we have the, all of the different sunflowers that we um, planted. And there again are uh, three different sections. So we tried to plant with uh, succession in mind and we kind of screwed that up, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But that first plot that was over there on the other side of the tractor was supposed to be in bloom first and then this stuff and then this stuff. And then there was supposed to be a period where they, um, each of these patches kind of overlapped. Well, that didn't really work out. And like I said, I'll talk more about that. But anyway, the main layout of what we had works pretty good where we put the zinnias and cosmos in these big long rows. There's an aisle way in between each one that people can get up and down. And uh, it was easy to plant, easy to manage. It looks great and all of that. So that's our general layout. Uh, there's not a whole lot about this layout that I'll change, but I'll talk more about changes and improvements for next year closer to the end of the video. So as far as pick your own flowers, uh, the, the types that we had in here were just zinnias, cosmos, and sunflowers. And there were a couple different kinds of sunflowers, like I mentioned. And that was enough for us. I don't think anyone really came to us expecting that there'd be more. I know many flower growers out there grow lots of different varieties so that you can assemble like complete bouquets with a nice mix in there. Um, we're really more after kind of the farm experience than we are after going at, um, and building, you know, complete bouquets. So as far as adding more stuff in the future and adding filler options and all of that. I don't think we're really going to get into that. We're just going to continue doing this kind of farmy feel that, we're, that we've been doing. So back to the point of layout. I think everything here generally worked okay. We'll make some changes. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the real big issue for us is that this patch is about a quarter mile walk, a little bit less than a quarter mile walk from the parking area. So our guests have to come from our parking lot, come down the hill, walk across the, the pond, and then walk across our Christmas tree field over there to get to this patch. And in the Central Virginia heat in July and August, that was just a lot for some people to ask. And some of our older guests actually just couldn't walk that far. Anyway, so we need to rethink where we're putting our patch and how accessible the patch is for our customers. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that didn't work out as planned. This was our first year growing Cosmos. And there was only one row that we trellised. You can kind of see the white netting in that row there. And the trellis really helps these plants stay upright. We had a couple storms come through where our other rows that did not end up getting trellised, uh, a lot of the plants got knocked over. And when the plants did get knocked over, you can kind of see in here, the IOA easily got blocked. So unless you're gonna plan for much larger aisles and account for those plants falling over, uh, you, you really do need to trellis the cosmos and we'll end up doing that for future years. The rest of our aisle ways, we probably could go a little wider. Our first year doing this, our plants really weren't all that healthy and they didn't get that big. And we didn't have the same issue with the plants coming in and encroaching in on the aisle a little bit. So giving a little bit more space for future years is something that I'm going to look at doing for the individual aisles for people to walk up and down. The other thing that I'm going to change is that I did three zinnia rows on the outside here. Then I did one cosmos and we had our big aisle. And then we had five or six rows of cosmos. We had a big aisle. 
and then we had another row of Cosmos, and then we had another three rows of Zinnias. Anyway, in the future, I'm just going to keep all of the same flowers together. Even if we end up succession planting, I am going to just keep them together because it would have been a lot more impressive to have all the Zinnias together. It would have looked like a small field of Zinnias rather than having three rows over here and three rows over there. Separate like this, it just didn't look like nearly as many. Still looks nice, but it just didn't look like nearly as many. And I think, you know, perception is what we're going after, even though we're doing a relatively small scale here, we want people to feel like there's just a lot out here for them to enjoy. So putting all those flowers together will help that. Kind of the same story with the sunflowers. And I thought we were being smart and succession planting these. And we were thinking, I was thinking when we laid this out that we would have um, basically a, a good selection of sunflowers at once for people. So we planted like uh, this autumn blend mix. We had um, firecrackers, which were the short ones here. And then over here, we did a little bit of firecrackers and then we did pro cut orange. And when these rows here were blooming together, they looked phenomenal. And then we kind of did the same thing over there. We did some firecrackers, we did some broke out orange, and then we had more of the autumn beauties on the other side. And anyway, the timing got all messed up on this. Oh, and there's more firecrackers on the outside. You can just see some of the small ones over there. So we got the timing messed up, which is one issue. And then we also had uh, just all these different heights of flowers all next to each other. Fortunately, I didn't make the mistake of putting the tall ones like on the outside rows and the short ones on the inside rows or anything like that. I was at least somewhat savvy enough to get the taller ones in the middle and that worked out okay. With the sunflowers, pretty much same thing. It would have been a lot more impressive if we didn't split everything up and we just had individual patches of the same type of flower. We did it earlier in the year. Uh, let me actually walk up. It wasn't that early. It was just a few weeks ahead of when this patch here was ready. But just over there, you can see where I recently cut it all down. That dead patch over there was where we had a 30 foot by 60 foot patch of sunflowers, all the same variety. And that was for some of our early season photography. We really didn't do much picking out of that. And this patch here looked great and everybody loved it. And it was plenty big that it looked good in photos. I could do six or eight 30 by 60 foot patches in this area. And if I stretched it down into this area down here, I could have numerous. Um, I don't know the exact measurement up here, but point being, I could do that easily and have these individual patches planted at different times so that we have different things in bloom um, d depending on how long that we want to stay open. Which actually, let's transition into the operation of how we did our picking event. We opened, um, well, first let me talk about timing. So on uh, mid-July, we had zinnias and cosmos ready. We planted all that early June and we weren't expecting to have blooms already. In fact, the packaging for those say expect like 60 to 75 day maturity. Well, we were expecting mid August to have mature plants, not have plenty of blooms starting mid July. So when all of these plants here started to be ready, that was also when that sunflower patch down there was blooming. We said, all right, well, let's go ahead and open for some U-Pick opportunities. And we just did a couple, we did a couple weekends and then we did one or two weekdays um, just based on our availability pretty much because we weren't planning on being open that early. We we're planning on focusing all of our U-Pick activity in August and early September this year. And um, anyway, that's what we did. We advertised, we had some people come out and the, the long and short of it is that we didn't have any particular day or any particular weekend that really just like knocked our socks off. I think the largest revenue day that we had from those individual U-Pick events um, were, was like $280 in one day. And for us to sit out here all day, that just wasn't enough for me to say this is worth it. Now, over the course of several weekends and doing that, it added up to uh, a meaningful amount of money. But still, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time to sit out here and to be open for, uh, for picking in this manner, which is part of our challenge. We don't live on our property, and I know some of you out there who might be considering doing something like this, you do live at your, your property and you can sit inside and you can do your regular job or you can um, work around your yard or do whatever it is that you need to do. And when someone drives up, you can just say, oh, okay, I'll help them now. And 
um, and that's it. But for us, we actually have to drive 35 minutes from our house to here. We have to sit here, we have to be open. And because it's a quarter mile, I mentioned, from the entrance up there to the patch, we actually have to like guide people. It's not like they can just drive right up, get out of their car and start cutting flowers like they can on a much smaller property. So what we found that worked really well for us is doing a much larger event and we called that event Flower Fest and that's actually what we were planning on doing all along. I mentioned with the timing we were expecting everything to peak mid-August and maybe go into early September. We were originally planning on doing two, maybe three weekends, maybe even four if things really stretched out that long. Um, but on each of those two, three, or four weekends, we would have a full featured event that we would call Flower Fest. And in doing Flower Fest, we would have lots of other games and activities, which we do and we have done with our other events. So we have a separate field over that way where we have different games and activities. We've got a playhouse for kids, we have tetherball, we have giant Jenga. We bought uh, lawn darts, we built a mini soccer golf course, we had a paint a flower pot activity. So it's just lots of things. We set out all of our equipment and kids can climb on it and take their pictures and all that kind of stuff. And that was what our events were supposed to be. When we advertised Flower Fest, that actually generated some excitement. Flower Fest uh, got a lot of activity. And then actually, I also submitted a press release to the local media stations, and it got picked up by two different um, TV stations. One of them I actually got to go and talk on air, and the other one just featured the details of our, our event and some photos of our flowers and of our property um, for like a little 30 second promo, so no cost. So anyway, we got some good exposure there, and those two things definitely brought some new people out to our farm, and that worked out really well for us. So all of that's to say for us and the way that we operate, because we don't live here and because we're trying to, to make a more like farm focused, family friendly event, we need to focus on doing bigger events, which means I need to get the timing of the flowers better. I need to make sure everything's set up really well for photo opportunities. And I need to really focus our marketing and focus our energy into doing as few weekends as possible for as many attendees as possible in that period of time. So let's talk about pricing. When we were open for just you pick days where we did not have any of the extra activities, so, the, so our non-fest days, we only charged for flowers and it started with a 20 ounce cup, as many stems as you could fit in a 20 ounce cup. We did that for 10 bucks. We had a $25 small bucket, we called that, okay? Uh, or actually, we might have called that a medium bucket. Yeah, we call it a small cup, medium bucket, $25 for that. That is uh, less than a gallon. I think it's 0.6 gallons. And then we had the five quart pail. That was a $40 bucket, a large bucket. And then we also offered a $60 bucket at times. And we let people bring their own buckets up to five gallons. If it was a five gallon bucket, that was $60. So uh, most people, you know, weren't savvy enough, if you wanted to say that to uh, pick all of the foliage off of their zinnia stems, for example. So they really weren't maximizing how much they could fit in whatever size container they, could, they, they picked or brought, if that was the case. So anyway, I think our pricing was about right on. When we were open for fest days and we had all the extra family-friendly activities, we also charged $5 admission for everyone who was four years of age or older. Three and under were free. So uh, that actually worked out really, really well for us because there were plenty of people who just wanted to come and take pictures with flowers and not pick anything. And in the past when we've done these types of things and we didn't charge any kind of admission, we always had a donation box out and some people would leave a donation, but many wouldn't. So you kind of, I think you've got to force people to pay admission and then price the buckets and whatnot accordingly based on the fact that you've already collected admission from these people. Um, so anyway, I don't feel bad at all about charging admission. I know I've talked to some farmers and, and people who do this kind of thing and they don't like to do, um, they don't like to do admission, but we collected almost a thousand dollars worth of admissions and that really, really helps boost the revenue from an event like this. So uh, we had, you know, these three size, uh, sizes of, um, containers. I think these were about the right size. And, uh, you know, as far as that kind of stuff, the pricing and the sizing and all that, I'm not going to change any of that for next year. So I mentioned the, the only challenging part that was for our customers and the only kind of negative feedback that we got was the fact that our flower patches, well, let me spin you all the way around. 
people come in up there. Our parking area is way up there, okay? They walk down this gravel road. We had a check-in tent right here. They walk down the gravel road that way until they get across the pond. Then they cut across the tree field and the flower patch was over there on the other side of the pond. So like I said, it was almost a quarter mile from the parking area. It's a bit of a hike on a 95 degree day. So the biggest shift that we're gonna make for next year is we are going to move our flower patch over here. We've got this field here, which is just over an acre. And uh, we're not gonna plant the whole thing, but uh, I need to, starting now, get this soil ready for flowers for next year because this is where we're going to do flowers so it's right here people can enter the property they can pay pass our shed this wood pile won't be here and they can head right through this little clearing over to the flower patch not a bad walk at all and then just down the hill from there you can't see it from here but just over there through those trees is our hidden field where all the games and activities for the kids are so it's uh, keeping everything on this side of the pond a lot less walking for people and i think everyone's going to enjoy that a lot more on a hot hot summer day well, thanks for spending a little time with me today. If you have any questions about how we ran our event or um, additional things that you thought I should have covered in this video or whatever, just leave those in the comments below or send me a note on Facebook or through the contact form on our website at woodstreefarm.com. I answer all of that stuff. So uh, however I can help you with our experiences that we're having here, I'm happy to help you guys. And that's why I do these videos. So thanks again for spending some time. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.